everyone. How are you? So great to see you tonight, Friday night. <sighs> Lockdowns again happening everywhere. And um, so great to see you. It's Friday night, November. I don't even know what day is today. I think it's November 21st. Yes, it is Saturday. I just want to say, first of all, for everyone joining me right now that's coming on, thank um, thank you so much for all of your encouragement. Uh, on my post uh, the other day, I think it was yesterday or the day before, where I actually had, these were actual witches coming at me. So I'm going to talk a little bit about it, but I don't think that you guys really understand the amount of warfare that I come up against. Again. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I am from India. Sorry, I got hair in my face again. I am 100% uh, Indian. So uh, I'm from the old Persian Empire, the Punjab area in, uh, in, Esther, in the Book of Esther. So I was, uh, I was born in India and I am 100% from there. Both parents from India. And... Uh, I believe that God has plucked me out from that region and brought me to the United States so that I could get saved and I could come to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I was in darkness and I got delivered from the powers of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. So um, if you see my hair and makeup, I used to be a makeup artist for Christian Dior. Christian Dior is very famous uh they were very famous designers, so I traveled as a makeup artist, and I did professional modeling for many years until I got saved. And um, I was very involved in the New Age movement. I was heavily involved and had a lot of abilities to do things supernaturally that I didn't know that were coming from Satan's kingdom. And I want you guys to share this video as I begin to speak about the things that I've been through. And I just wanted to uh, also let you know that my uh, testimony has been shared around the world on the 700 Club, uh, TBN, uh, Total Christian uh, Television Network, TCT, and all of the networks around the world. And I speak and sing around the world. I'm also an author of two books. And uh, I do encourage everyone to stick to the Bible. Those two books were written uh, just for extra information and how to be... Uh, how, to, how to know uh, the strategies of the enemy because that is what I came out of. So if you look at my appearance and you see the black hair and the olive skin and things like that and, and uh, any exotic looks, it comes from India. So again, it's, um, I came from the old Persian empire from Esther's book in Punjab. So both of my mother and my grandmother were born in Lahore, which is now India, but it or, or it's now Pakistan, but it used to be India. So, uh, so we're from the North region, and so that's why uh, you'll see me in Indian dresses and different things and jewelry. And this is Indian, actually. So you'll see me in different things from India, and uh, love my culture. I just hate the gods that they serve. So I'm going to begin. Uh, please share my video and. So as, uh, when I posted the post the other day um, about the witch coming at me, and uh, I did not even know she was a witch, but I knew it from what she had said to me. And I have gotten these things for about nine years now. So uh, when somebody manifests like that, you know they're demons. And I'm going to talk about how this all transpired and how the level of, excuse me, of warfare got greater. So please share this video. Let's get ready. So I have to be a little bit, uh, excuse me, I have to be a little bit cautious about the depth of information I'm going to share because I do have people that watch my videos that hate me and uh, it is not important to share who I was praying for uh, because these people do watch my videos and they seethe with demonic hatred that I've never seen at, the, at levels at this time that we live in. The demonic hatred is pretty incredible 
and it's only going to get worse as we approach the end times as Jesus was saying that they're going to deliver you up to the churches and you will be killed in the name of God. So, uh, I was praying, I'm going to get into this, I was praying and we know this COVID-19, this coronavirus is going around and uh, we know how uh, it was created in the Wuhan lab in China and God has shown me some things that I had never seen before. So I started praying for a particular individual about five days ago or maybe six days ago. And I was in warfare praying. I, I stood before God's throne room. I entered in boldly. He says, come boldly to the throne of grace to find mercy and help in time of need in his word. So I came boldly into his throne room and I began to beseech God on the behalf of an individual because uh, so many people have died from this, uh, this virus that nobody's talking about because you're too afraid to talk about it because of the backlash. But a lot of people I know have passed away from it and friends that I know have gotten it have been extremely ill. So I began, I went to the throne room of God and I cried and, and I, I beseeched God on behalf of an individual for God to spare this person's life. And as I began to pray, the Lord, uh, he's began to show me things in the spirit that I'd never seen before. So as I began to enter into his throne room and I began to, you know, the Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places in Ephesians 6, 12. So I knew that as I entered God's throne room boldly by the blood of Jesus, that uh, he started showing me some things as I began to intercede for a person that is in rebellion against God. Okay? So I began to intercede for God to have mercy. This person uh, contracted the COVID-19. And I knew that they were not met, ready to meet the Lord. I knew it. They don't know it, but I knew it. Because we know. We know. So as I began to pray... The Lord began to take me in the spirit and he began to give me things, not, um, not logos, not the written word of God, but the rhema, the re revealed word of God. He began to give me the rhema word of God as I begin to go into the spirit and the spirit realm. Because again, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is a wrestling match. So I'm going to go into this teaching, but what I wanted to share with you is God took me in the spirit as I was praying in the spirit and he took me over this person's body and he showed me the demons that were holding this person captive. He showed me the, the spirit of death. He showed me even this virus that it was a demonic entity that was released on this world. It was actually a demon, right? The spirit of infirmity, you know, this... Jesus said, by, our stri by his stripes we are healed. So the spirit of infirmity, this, this demonic COVID-19 was released over this earth to take the lives of people because Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So as I was praying, God began to show me the demons over this person. And I began to bind and loose demons over this person. I'm going to get into exactly what that means. So in the spirit, in the name of Jesus, because he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. And I had a level of warfare that I had never experienced before. So I began to pray over this person and the Lord showed me that this demon wanted to take this person's life. And I began to come against the spirit of death. And there is a death angel that what is, is real because... Just like the children of Israel, when they were in Egypt, God told them to take the blood of the lamb and put it over the doorpost of their house so the death angel would pass over. So we know that there is a demonic death angel that is assigned to kill people. So it is the blood of the lamb, the blood of Jesus. I kept pleading over this individual and coming up against these spirits. I was binding these demon spirits over this person and God began to show me 
witch demon spirits were on assignment over this person and these demons wanted to snuff this person's life out. So I began to come against this COVID-19, the spirit of infirmity, this demonic spirit of death, this death angel that was standing before this person and over this person's body as they lay sick in bed, I got an open vision. Because God operates in the supernatural. This is not a natural battle. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We are in a warfare against demons and, and powers of darkness. And I began to wrestle and I prayed so aggressively like I had never prayed before. And I and God began to show me which it was because the strong man has to be bound. We have to come against the strong man before we plunder his goods. So I began to come against a strong man and God began to show me these demons and what was holding this person captive, spirit of lies, spirit of divination, spirit, all, spirit of confusion, spirit of, of, of uh, the angel of death and all these demons that were ready to snuff out this person's life. And I began a warfare and then I began to praise God and I began to plead the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the risen Christ, the same blood that was shed at Calvary 2,000 years ago. And I kept pleading the blood of Jesus with the high praises of God in my mouth and a double-edged sword in my hand, which is the word of God, the sword of the Spirit. I began to, to speak that word for this purpose. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. I began to speak the word of God over this person and I kept praying night after night after night, begging God for mercy, coming up against these demon spirits, putting them on notice, dismantling their powers and strongholds over this individual in the name of Jesus and by the power of his blood because this is these are the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not carnal, they're not natural. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Please share this video. It's going to help you guys. Night after night, hours in prayer. Hours in prayer until I felt that I was praying through. And the saints of old, they know what praying through means. That means you don't stop praying until you know that there's a breakthrough in the spirit realm. So I kept praying until I knew there was a breakthrough in the spirit realm. And I got word from God and the Lord spoke to me as I, as I, and I, listen, you guys, it's Jesus that does this through us. It's not me, but we have to have courage to stand up against the powers of darkness, right? So I was praying because I knew that devil wanted to take that person's life. I knew it. I saw the demons over this person. I saw tentacles over this person. I saw, I saw like tentacles literally over this person's body. I saw attachments, generational curses and attachments over this person's body. And I began to come after each demon one by one. And I commanded that demon in the name of Jesus to, be, to lose that person. I bind those powers to lose that person and to be cast back to the pit of hell from whence it came. So, days later, I got word. I got word. God gave me my request to give this person a chance to live and to repent. Okay? So, I knew something had happened because for days, I had women and men coming up against me like those de that demon that said for me to go kill myself and that... Um, with such hatred and you guys saw it in my thread how this, these witches would come against me and if you if you look on their uh, siblings and other people that are associated with them they're actually Satanists they have the the uh, satanic the pentagram they have the witches with the horns and everything so they're actual witches that came after me uh, on my social media to uh, degrade me to cuss me out to put me down and remember, Satan hates beauty because he was once a beautiful angel. He hates your inner beauty of Christ and he hates your outer beauty. You're made in God's image and his likeness. So Satan was once a beautiful angel. He was perfect in beauty. I mean, the Bible says he was perfect. He had all these 
jewels on him and, and timbrels been built into his body. So he hates worshipers. He hates praising. He hates anything that's made in God's image and his likeness. You remind him of God. You are not a God, but you remind him because God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So you remind him of God. So Satan hates beauty because he was once a beautiful angel. He was a cherub that, that walked back and forth on the mountain of God. So now he's cursed. He's a serpent. He's nasty. He's ugly. He's, he's going to crawl on his belly for, for, you know, for the rest of his days. And he hates any beauty. He even hates God's creation. Anything beautiful. That's why he uses beauty to pervert. Uh, he uses beautiful women and good-looking men and any any beauty in, in a person, whether it's their singing, whether it's their giftings, to pervert and cause uh, mock God right in his face. So he uses anything beautiful that God has created, and he hates it with a venomous hatred. And that's why you see jealousy like Cain and Abel and like Saul and David and like uh, Joseph and seven of his brothers, they put him in the pit to be, to, to be left for dead. And the list goes on and on and on. So from the beginning, there's nothing new under the sun. So he hates beauty. So ladies, look as beautiful as you want. You know, you represent the kingdom of God. And guys, let God, ladies, let God use you for his glory. All your giftings, all the beauty inside and out that God has just giving you so satan hates beauty so when they come at me for my appearance these witches are coming at me because satan is using them they're demon infested right these women are demon infested and so they begin to manifest because i have shaken up the kingdom of darkness when i came up against them the last several days because i was casting out the demons out of this person that they were ready to take to the to the pit of hell. So, the devil will use anything he can. Anything. Okay? Anything. To get you to where he wants. To discourage you. To fight against you. Okay? So now I'm going to go into it. So now we have set. We have set the precedence of what has happened. Okay? So now I'm going to get into it because this is so important. Please share this video. In Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, Paul alerts that we're going to engage in intense spiritual conflict against a very cunning adversary, the devil. Listen, he uses people to destroy and come at you. That's what he does. Just like he does me. Just like what you see. I've been dealing with this for a long time. This is, this is not something new for me. I've been around the corner, around the block, many times over. I posted it because I wanted you guys to see. And when you do get attacked, just to add in, you have to forgive right away and pray blessings over that person. Right away, you overcome evil with good. The Bible commands us to forgive. And if we don't forgive, God says he will send the tormentors. So anytime anybody comes up against you, you have to forgive because... Satan doesn't want you to forgive. He wants you to become bitter and emboldened with so much hatred and malice and outbursts of anger and rage and all these things that the Bible addresses in Galatians 5, 19 through 20. And God says that when you operate in all of those things, it says outbursts of anger, rage, malice. Those people that practice such things will not go to the kingdom of heaven. That means it's going to keep you out of heaven. So it's really important that when you do get attacked by the devil, I don't care who it's through. It could be through your husband, wife, children, family, friends, uh, pastor. You have to forgive immediately because you cannot engage in battle spiritually unless you have forgiveness. <laughs> Unforgiveness, excuse me, is the root of most sicknesses and diseases. Not, not all of them. But unforgiveness is bondage, and it is the root of bondage. That's how people begin to get, uh, you know, the gall of bitterness, the root of bitterness. Um, that's how people fall away from God and begin to get infested uh, and angered against the church and against Christians and against people and go into rage and murder and suicide and self uh, 
uh, affliction, cutting themselves and all this other stuff. So unforgiveness and, and drug addiction and alcohol uh, abuse and all these things, uh, cancer, necrosis, cancer is a big one as well. So unforgiveness is the root of so much bondage. And it is, I believe, it is an agent used by the enemy from our own hearts that keeps us in, in bondage to deception. So we, we know that we have a very cunning adversary, the devil. And Satan, Satan has a command force of rebellious spirits. I mean, he has an, a whole host of demons that are an assignment to do whatever he wants. And these re rebellious spirits, they are persons without bodies. So these are spirits in the spirit realm. They're organized on various levels of authority, just like the kingdom of God. So, you know, you've got the archangels. You've got different angels on assignment over every individual. Um, you have angels in heaven. You have messenger angels. You know, messenger angel like Gabriel. Michael is the archangel. Then you've got angels on assignment for the heirs of the kingdom of God. So there are commanders in chief in the heavenly realms, whether it is in the demonic realm or whether it's in the realm of the most high God. So even Satan has levels of authority of various demons. The devil also has authority over all those who are disobedient to God. So Ephesians 2, 2 talks about it. He says that, uh, and also the Lord says that the spirit, um, the prince of the power of the air that works in the children of disobedience. So he has blinded the minds of the unbelievers that they cannot receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. They, they cannot, they, it's like an armor. They're blinded by the devil so they can't see. And that's why prayer is so vital. So the Bible, you know, so through God's intervention, we can be delivered from Satan's authority. Okay. And we can be transferred into the kingdom of God. For, and the Bible says that, I, you know, God has delivered us from the powers of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. I mean, what an awesome thing to be, to, to, it's hard to understand with our natural mind, okay? So outside of Christ, there is a system of darkness and it's in the heavenlies, which is, which this system of darkness dominates the world, this entire world. That's why you're seeing racism, hatred. Uh, you're seeing the political arena. You're seeing um, you're seeing all kinds of you know the, the the COVID virus and I mean all these things that are happening in the spirit realm because the demons are dominating this world system because um, Satan is the prince of this world. So that's why you're seeing this. So please share this video again. I'm going to get a little deeper into it. So the Bible reveals that there's more than one heaven. And we know this. Um, we know that uh, in 2 Corinthians 12, 2, Paul talks about, I know a man in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. But he was taken to the third heaven. And he was shown, he was shown things that are unlawful to utter. So if Paul said there's a third heaven, there must be a first heaven and a second heaven, Right? So uh, in Ephesians 4.10, the phrase all heavens indicates that there's at least three heavens, okay? So the King James Version, it translates, it translates it into high heavens so or the heavenlies. And so the first heaven is the visible heaven with the sun, the moon, the stars. And we know the second heaven is God, or the third heaven, I'm sorry, is God's dwelling place. So... We also know that Satan's headquarters, he roams around the earth. He, he's a roaring lion. He walks about the earth to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. So we know that Satan's headquarters are in an intermediate heaven. So we know that he's probably in the second heavens. He's going around. Please show this video. This is not shared in churches. Pastors aren't teaching about it. This is so important. We know Satan roams around the earth. He walks about the earth to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. So we know that he's seeking. He's looking. He's coming after you. He wants to devour you. He wants to kill you. So in Matthew 12, 24, or 24 to 28, Satan has a kingdom and uh, which he dominates. I mean, he is the prince of that kingdom. 
So he he rules over rebellious angels. So all the, the angels that are under him, they're rebellious dark demons that are on assignment of the children of darkness. And once you get saved, they're an assignment over you to come after you. But you have there's warfare, there's weapons that I'm gonna talk about. So um, he is called uh, Belzebub or the Lord of the Flies. He rules over demons. Um, and Satan's kingdom is challenged by God's kingdom in the ministry of deliverance. So when we're praying for people, we are challenging and going up against demon powers that Satan has over people. He's got strongholds over people. And so we're coming against those demon powers in the spirit realm. That is the ministry of deliverance. We are praying through, praying against the darkness of this age, praying against spiritual wickedness in high places, praying against this blindness that Satan has put over the children of disobedience of this world. He's a prince and the ruler of the prince of the power of the air. So in 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 5, God says, because we are in a spiritual war, God gives us uh, spiritual weapons, right? To break down Satan's strongholds. We have authority for this purpose. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. This is why <laughs> he took the keys of hell, death, and the grave. Listen, it is incredible how much power God has given you. But we don't rejoice that our name is, or that, that the demons are subject unto us, but we rejoice because our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Please. Please share this video. I'm getting all excited. So we know that Paul urges us that as we're living in this, this wicked world that we have to put on the whole armor of God. It's not that we just get saved and now we don't have any warfare. We actually go into warfare the moment we get saved. So if, if, if we were just saved and everything was okay, we'd be, we would be Okay, like, oh, okay, Jesus won. He took the keys of hell, death, and the grave. He made a public spectacle. He had, he triumphed over the demons. He, he, there was a big celebration going on. But Paul urges us to put on the whole armor of God that we can stand up against the wiles of the devil. That means we have, we are going into warfare. Just like I did the last several days, I was engaging in demonic warfare, coming up against demons of darkness and, and wickedness in the second heavens. I was looking up and I saw in the spirit these demons that were holding this person captive, fighting for their soul and for their life. So Paul says in Ephesians 6 that we have to put on the whole armor of God as protection against the devil. That means God says, put on that armor. you got to put it on because we have to confront. We have a confrontation with Satan, okay? And we've got to be prepared for battle in this world. We are not of this world. The kingdom of God is there, right? The kingdom of God is among us or within us. We are not of this world. We are in this world, but not of this world. So we are living in Satan's domain while we belong to a different kingdom, so God, God, listen, it took, it took God's angels, God's angel, sorry, Gabriel, three weeks to go through the sphere of the heavenlies. So Daniel began to pray and all of a sudden the angel Gabriel shows up and says, Hey, listen, God heard your prayers and he answered you on the day that you started praying. But then he says, the prince of Persia, the rebellious angels of Satan, the principalities withstood him 21 days. Listen, the, the, one of the greatest angels of God had to fight demonic principalities in the heavenlies, in the second heavenlies. I'm sure he came from the third heaven where God's seat is, his throne room is. We are in the first heavens, the natural realm, the moon, the stars, the sun, the earth. So we know that he had to withstand in the second heavens. There's a battle going on over the souls of men. It's not about your money. It's not about your possessions. It's not about your job. It's not about your car. It's not about uh, anything except the souls of men and eternity. Please share this video. So 
We have to put on the girdle of truth. What is the what is the girdle of truth? We have to get rid of all religious hypocrisy, religious spirits. We must be honest about ourselves and honest to others about ourselves and honest to God. We have to, uh, the girdle of truth, we have to stand on the word of God. The word of God is truth. There is no other truth. We have to repent of our own truth, our falsehood. This is a weapon of warfare. The truth, the truth of the word of God, the truth in the inward parts, the, the truth coming out of our mouth, the truth in our thoughts and our thought life. So I'm going to get into that. The breastplate of righteousness, living right, holiness protects the heart. You got to have a, you have to be right with God. I'm not going to get deep into this, but you have to have the breastplate of righteousness. You got to live right. You got to talk right. You got to do right. You cannot engage in a battle in, as a soldier if you are living in sin. I mean, you want to talk about the devil taking you out. You want to talk about attacks that you're going to get if you're not repented in a humble humble repented lifestyle you are going to you're going to be so attacked by the devil the next thing is uh the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace jesus is our peace who has broken down the middle wall of partition we used to be separated from god we have to walk in the gospel of peace we have to walk in Jesus, in the peace of Jesus, okay? We have to walk in righteousness and truth and peace. We also have to have the shield of faith. It's a shield that, it's a weapon of warfare, the shield of faith. That means we gotta stand on God's word. We gotta stand by faith. The, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. By God's word, he created the heavens. He created the earth. He created the firmaments. He spoke the word. He spoke everything into existence out of nothing. We can't speak things to existence, you word of faith people. We are not God. We can speak God's word over situations, but we cannot speak things into existence. So we have to have the shield of faith that no matter what happens, no matter what attacks we're coming up against, that we stand on what God says, his word, faith, the faith of God, the faith in God, in God, that he's going to do what he says he's going to do, that he's going to honor his word. That's the shield of faith. Listen, this is weapons of warfare. You cannot live without this. Then he says a helmet of salvation, a renewed mind, knowing that you're saved. Our hope is in Christ. Our hope is in the blood of Jesus, that we have the mind of Christ. Listen, the helmet of salvation protects our mind. Salvation. Listen, salvation is so important. The helmet, it protects and guards us. We renew our mind in the Word of God. That's why it's so important to be in the Word of God. Please show this video, you guys. Okay, the next thing is the sword of God's Word, the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit. Oh, Lord Jesus. Listen, when I was in warfare against those demons these last several days, I had that word of God speaking like the Son of God coming out of my mouth. I said, it is written. 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 And I kept speaking the word of God against all the powers of the enemy. It is written that no weapon that is formed against you is going to prosper. It is written that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against you. It is written, it is written that whom the sun sets free is free indeed. It is written in Psalm 118 that you shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. It is written, you have to know the word of God by heart. And if you don't know the word of God by heart, write it down. Open up the Bible and start praying the book of Psalms over your situation, right? So these are the weapons of attack. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12, that, that Satan, the satanic kingdom opposes the children of God, okay? We must overcome. We are more than overcomers through Christ, okay? We are overcomers. So we know that we have the weapons we need for the spiritual battle, okay? This is a spiritual battle, God says he's given us six items of armor to protect ourselves, right? So let's go more, a little bit more into it. And I'm going to, uh, uh, I hope my phone doesn't die. This is so important. The enemy, the enemy has a place in which he abides. Okay. 
He seeks to control you, manipulate you, master you, and keep you away from the kingdom of God and God's control. That's his agenda. And there is a battle, like I said, taking place between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God. Satan is the ruler of this world. He's the God of this world in 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. That's what the Bible says. The ruler of this world will one day will be cast out. He'll be cast into the lake of fire. But until that time, you know, people imagine the devil shoveling coals in hell and that he's there. But we see that Satan presented even himself in the book of Job. He came before the Lord and asked for, and God presented Job to him. And the Lord said to Satan, where do you come from? And Satan answered and said, from going to and fro the earth and from walking back and forth on it. So we know again that he's in the second heavens. So we know that his abode has been on the earth and around the earth's atmosphere when he got kicked out of heaven till this present day, Isaiah 14, 12 through 17, Ezekiel 28 talks about it as well. Like I said, Satan hates beauty. He hates inner beauty and outer beauty, anything that's created in God's image. He perverts it. He uses it for pornography, for uh, soliciting sex, for uh, for. Uh, he, that's why he has people cutting their bodies. That's why he has human sex trafficking. He perverts the very thing that he used to be. He used to be a beautiful angel and he hates any beauty, in, inward, outer. He hates worshipers. He hates musicians. But he loves those musicians that use secular music, that go into secular music, promote secular agendas and doctrines in their music and cause rebellion and witchcraft and slavery and sorcery and uh, lust and drugs and like I said, that's what the devil does. So we we know that Satan works with the unregenerate, okay? All re unregenerate people are lost mankind. They are under the control of the ha or the habitation of the devil. Please share this video. Apostle John said, we know we are the children of God and the whole world or unregenerate men are under the control of the evil one. 1 John 5.19 Paul speaks of our life before Christ. He said, we formerly walked according to the prince of the power of the air, the, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. We were once enslaved to the devil. Once we were. That's why he hates us so much. Ephesians 2, 2. That's why the strong man must be bound before people can be set free to come to Jesus. Mark 3, 27 talks about it. Colossians 1, 13. Strongholds. We're going to talk about the strong man. We're going to talk about binding and loosing. Okay, strongholds, the weapons of, like I said, are not, of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing, thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 through 5. The enemy of, of, of our soul attempts to set up strongholds against us and against God's people, his church and anything advancing the kingdom of God. Or the knowledge of God in this world. That means he is on assignment to stop you from, or me, from speaking the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He wants to destroy you. He wants to hinder you. He wants to stop you. Even the disciples at one point said Satan has hindered us from going into this region. But we will try again another time. As Lord willing. So we know that the devil has power even against God's disciples in the Bible that he brings hindrances, right? So Ephesians 2.2 2 talks about, uh, you know, that's, uh, I'm sorry, that's what Ephesians 2.2 2 talks about. That's why the strong man must be bound. So these strongholds must be down with spiritual weapons of warfare, the word praying, exercising our authority through Jesus Christ. And Luke 10.19 talks about it. The blood of Jesus, the word of our testimony, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. Sharing your testimony is so powerful and so effective in the spirit realm. It, it declares every time that God has delivered you from the powers of darkness. It is, declares to the spirit realm the glory of the risen Savior and his blood and how powerful he is. So Satan cannot stand your testimony that's why he clouds your testimony. That's why he puts down your testimony. That's why he gets you into sin. That's why he gets you into prayerlessness, not reading the word, compromising with sin because he doesn't want you to have a testimony. He wants, he knows how powerful your testimony is. Sorry, I gotta take, ooh. 
He wants to stop you. Okay? High praises of God. He hates your praises. Praising is a way to be delivered from the powers of darkness. Okay? The high praises of God in our mouth and a two-edged sword in our hand to execute judgment to the nations. Please share this video. I have to share everything God's shown me. Your mind is one of the greatest places the enemy is going to put up strongholds. Your mind brings, that's why the Bible says casting down imaginations, every high thin, thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience and lordship of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. The emphasis here that I'm talking about is imaginations. You know, all day long, the devil lies to you. All day long, he says to you, you ain't good for nothing. You ain't nothing. You're not going to be nothing. You're going to be, you look at God doesn't love you. You're disobedient. You're no good for nothing. You ain't worth nothing. Look at how you look. Oh, you're so ugly. You're, you're worthless. You know, um, look, look at what your dad said about, <clears throat> about you, your mother, people, just like that witch said to me, go kill yourself. Just like, you know, other women come up against me and said, oh, look at how you look and how ugly you are and you ain't nothing Yasmin you ain't this listen these are witches so I'm trying to help you witchcraft comes through many sources and again Satan hates your beauty he hates anything about you he's gonna he's gonna come at you with full force he's gonna attack your talents he's gonna attack your blessings he's gonna attack your appearance he's gonna attack Jesus in you He's going to say, you ain't saved. You ain't nothing. You ain't no good. Jesus is never going to use you. You're a failure. I mean, even after you repent, oh, you didn't really repent. You know, you're not. I remember when I first got saved, the devil would always tell me, you're not saved. You're not saved. Look at you. don't feel it. You know you're not saved. I used to have to fight that. I couldn't believe he was telling me all the time, you're not saved. You're not saved. And I knew I was because I was repenting all the time. And I was like. You know, I, I keep repenting. Like daily I'm repenting and I'm being sanctified from glory to glory. I know I'm saved because I'm better today than I was yesterday. And God is safe and He's He's delivering me every day. Every day I'm better. I'm better. I'm I'm living more holy. I'm living more sanctified. And the work that He began in me, He will complete it into the day of His coming. So that's how you know the evidence. You have the evidence of the fruit of the Spirit. It's the evidence. The fruit of the Spirit is evidence that you're saved. It's not something you can work up, conjure up. We are not saved by works. We are saved by grace. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. So, let me take a deep breath. <laughs> I get so excited. Okay, so. Now, we're going to say we're, the devil attacks your mind through deceit, unbelief, doubt, discouragement, trickery, and a whole host of other things. So, 2 Corinthians 2.11, Paul says, Lest Satan should take an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices or his schemes. So, this is so important. The enemy wants to set up strongholds in your mind. That's what he does. So, the mind. The mind. This is your biggest battleground right here. As a man thinketh, so he is. So the next thing I'm going to talk to you about is you, Mark 3.27. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods unless he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. You cannot effectively come against the spiritual host of darkness demon powers in the heavenly realms until first of all you're submitted 100% to Jesus you're washed in the blood of the lamb you will humble yourself under the hand of almighty God you resist the devil and he flees you walk in obedience to the lordship of Jesus Christ you have surrendered your life to him for his glory then you engage in warfare or else Satan is going to come at you okay so if you're praying for people Satan hates it. You, God will give you full authority. Okay? He has given you full authority. So that's why you can't let the devil just torment you and attack you. So listen, he gives you full authority. You have to, the strong man, the devil binds and blinds people through this COVID virus, lawlessness, hatred, everything that you see coming in the end times. 
so much lawlessness and violence and racism and everything that you see, such a disregard for God, such a disregard for the holiness of God, even a, it, making fun of the holy things of God, making jokes out of him, disregarding that God is holy and he is not to be blasphemed. We are living in the end times. There are strongholds over regions, people, even families, even cities, even a person, generational strongholds. So the strong man over these strongholds, you have to go into the into the spirit with God and pray. You have to be seeking God in his throne room and saying, Lord, you have to show me by not the Logos word of God, but the Rhema word of God and through the word of knowledge, which demons are over that person or over that family or over the situation. So when God gives you that revelation through his spirit, He's going to show you which demons, which is a strong man and which demons to come up against. And the very demons that you come up against are going to attack you through other realms. Just be prepared for that, okay? So, Jesus said he's given us authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy in Luke 10, 19. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So you have to go in there and bind that strong man. You have to plunder his goods. You have to plunder him and then take his goods. You got to go in there, bind that strong man. I don't know what that strong man could be. It could be spirit of divination or witchcraft. It could be, uh, it could be a Jezebel spirit. It could be um, the spirit of uh, lies. It could be anything over a, an individual spirit of rebellion. It could be anything. God has to show you the strong man. So the Bible again says in Mark 3, 27, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man, then he will spoil his house or plunder his goods. We are to take aggressive action, okay? The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Matthew 16, 18. Gates are there to keep things out. The, the gates of hell are set up to keep, listen, the gates of hell will not prevail against us. There are gates that hell has. The gates of hell. Get it? Gates of hell shall not prevail against us. And so instead of getting attacked and us just reacting, we got to fight back. We are the ones who have to be aggressive and take the initiative against the gates of hell. We have to fight. We have to fight. We, are, we have to be aggressive against the enemy. We cannot allow for him to prevail over us. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent men take it by force. Matthew eleven twelve. So we have to aggressively attack and wage war against the gates of hell and the forces of darkness and take the kingdom by force. You cannot just sit there and do nothing when people are going to hell. Witches are coming against you. You can't, you got to use biblical principles. Again, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 5. For we walk in the flesh, we're not waging war against the flesh. For remember the king, remember the who the real enemy is. The Bible says Satan's kingdom is divided. It cannot stand. So we know that. Through God's intervention, we can be delivered from Satan's authority. Satan's authority. We've already talked about that. Satan has a kingdom which he dominates, and it's and it's he has a kingdom, and we got to go against that kingdom. So I pray that this helps you. This is a lot of information, and this is all I got to share. And this is why you guys saw the witches coming up against me, women, men coming up against me to try to tear me apart. Because like I said again, Satan hates beauty. He used to be a beautiful angel one time. He used to be perfect in beauty. Ezekiel 14, Isaiah 28. He, he was the cherub, the beautiful cherub that guarded, that, that walked on the, the, king, the, the holy mountain of God. He had all the timbrels built into him. He had, he had all kinds of rubies and gems and onyx and emeralds built into his body. Can you imagine how beautiful he used to be? So he hates anything 
of beauty. He hates the beauty of the sky. He hates the beauty of, of the sunrise and the sunset. He's full of darkness. He hates beauty and he loves darkness. He hates anything. That's why, like I said, he takes beauty and he perverts it. That's why you see women in porn. That's why you see human sex trafficking. That's why you see magazines full of lust. That's why you see, you know, um, you know, when I was modeling professionally, God said, get out of modeling because I wasn't strong enough to handle the temptation that I was going to be up under. It was too much for me as a brand new Christian. And the lifestyle was too, too much partying and too demonic. So God said, get out of the modeling. Even though I did it here and there, uh, years after I got saved when I got stronger, but it's, it's a field that I would never want to go back into. So, and also television. And I was very involved in all of those things. And God said, no, come out from among them, separate yourselves. Not that we can't be in every sphere of, um, of industry in the world. We should be a, a great influence. I just was not strong enough at that time. And God knew it. And he said, come out. Because Satan would have perverted me and perverted my life and used my appearance and used my body to, uh, to be as, as a demonic sacrifice at his altar to... Um, to for sin for sex for immorality to seduce to uh to do evil things but god can use beauty of all sorts and i'm speaking to all my beautiful sisters in christ and my handsome brothers uh that we can be submitted to god and resist the devil and he will flee and god can use beauty like he did job's daughters and ruth and esther and um and Daniel, Daniel was, uh, and his uh, three companions were perfect, and they didn't have one blemish on, on them, and they were intelligent. And uh, Absalom, Absalom, David's son, was praised daily for his good looks, but but he he wanted to kill his own father. So uh, we know that God can use anything for His glory, um, and Satan can use it for destruction, right? So God can use beauty for his glory ladies that's why i really stress for you guys to um you can look beautiful glamorous you can look like a princess you are a princess and a child of the most high god he is the king of kings and the lord of lords i dress for him i dress for him i do my hair my makeup for him i i i play the part of a godly daughter his his bride his princess and it's okay to do that. It's 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 a godly thing because my heart, my heart is submitted to him. And it is more important how I look inside than how I look outside. But I must present my body as a living sacrifice, which is my reasonable service or my body, you know, my temple. I mean, listen, I got to take the trash out of this temple of sin and rebellion and evil evil thoughts, evil surmisings, bitterness, unforgiveness. You've got to ask God to clean you out. Submit yourself. Surrender. You can't fix yourself. You've got to let the Lord and His presence fix you. And then you can become a vessel for His honor and glory instead of a vessel for destruction. So, again, I said um, 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober-minded, be watchful, be sober, be alert, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, Pro, pro, prowls like a roaring lion around the earth. He he just goes around. He's looking in the second heavens. He's roaming the atmosphere, seeking whom he may devour. You have to resist him steadfast in the faith. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. I love you guys. I really pray this helped you tremendously. Remember, when someone attacks you, and they come at you and there's something in them that's jealous of you, that hates you, that hates your radical submission to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I don't care if they come in Jesus' name. I don't care if they're Christians or not. Whoever they are, they are being used by the devil. And it is Satan who wants to seek to kill you, okay, and to discourage you and to stop you from furthering the gospel of Jesus Christ and preaching his word. I know that I'm not the only person dealing with this, but you have to remember the source. The source, and, and Satan has witches and warlocks too, because when you come up and you destroy, and you destroy that strong man, and you bind those powers of darkness and those demons, 
and you cast them out and you destroy that strong man over someone, over your family, over people, over a situation, the, the spirit realm knows exactly what's happen happening and the demons are being shaken up. That means you're doing something right when you're being attacked. That means the devil is going to use people when they have a demonic hatred for you that they don't even understand because they don't. They don't know why they hate you so much because it's a demonic, supernatural hatred against the children of God. So God bless you. I pray this helped. Please share this video. And remember that we are overcomers through Christ who strength, strengthens us. Even in our weakness, he is made strong. You are more than a conqueror through Christ. And he has given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Nothing will by any means hurt you or harm you. And one day we're going to see him face to face. And what we can't see is what's real. What we can see is temporal and it's all going to be destroyed. But what we can't see in the spirit realm, unless God gives us revelation through spiritual eyes and through the word of knowledge and, 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 uh, and, and his supernatural ways of what to come up against, we cannot see what's going on. But I got a chance to see it. I got a chance to see it. It's not the first time. I just wanted to share it with you. God is a prayer answering God and these COVID-19 and these all these things, these are demonic spirits that are unleashed to steal, kill, and destroy all the inhabitants of the earth that are made in God's image and his likeness. And uh, some are for noble uses, some are for, for judgments. So just make sure you're, a, you're, you're not a friend of the world and that you're not an enemy of God, okay? God bless you. I pray that you will repent. I pray that you will seek his face like never before. Jesus is coming. We are at the end and put on your seatbelts because we're getting ready for the ride of our lives with what's happening with this, these elections and everything that's going to happen and with the virus and the vaccines and our economy and everything that's getting ready to be shaken like you've never seen before. This is setting up the stage for the Antichrist. The warfare is getting heavier and one day one day, Jesus is, we're going to come back with him riding on those horses, ten thousands upon thousands of the saints. And we're going to be riding on those horses and we're going to be battling with, with him again at the battle of Armageddon at the end of the seven year tribulation. So remember to be ready, get ready, put on the whole armor of God that you can stand up against the wiles of the devil. Now we're in battle now, but we're going to be fighting with Jesus, our Savior, our Commander-in-Chief of the armies of heaven. We're going to be coming back, riding those white horses. We're going to be riding right alongside with them. And we're going to, we're going to enjoy after the thousand years of the millennium is up, millennium, Satan is going to be finally cast into the lake of fire with his demons. But the sad part is, Billions of people are going to be thrown into that lake of fire too. That's the saddest part. But we're going to rejoice at God's justice, okay? That's not going to be any more crying or weeping. We're not going to know who's there, who's not. We're not going to weep over it. Our labor, we will, we'll, we will rest from our labors one day. And right now we're in warfare, but it's going to end soon. Jesus is coming. Look up. For your redemption draws nigh when you see all these things happening. Look up. Look up. Jesus is coming. Look up. Look up. He's coming for us, church. He's coming. Pray that you're accounted worthy to escape the wrath that is to come upon this earth and to stand before the Son of Man. Pray that you're accounted worthy to escape. God bless you. I love you. Please share this video. Thank you.